All right, we're here at the Lehigh Valley Zoo. Dan Freemuth alongside Liz, the lead keeper here at the Lehigh Valley Zoo. And we are obviously at the giraffe barn. Tattoo is behind us. And Liz, take us through exactly what we've got going on here with Tattoo. All right, absolutely. So Tattoo right now is engaged in a training session, which is one of his favorite times of the day. It's a way for us to really kind of get that one-on-one -on -one bonding time with the giraffe, build our relationship with them, and just also engage Tattoo's brain. Um, he's out here on the exhibit. He's a lot of stuff to do. He's got enrichment, different food options, but this is a way for us to just really kind of switch up his day and it also just really engages his brain really well. So Meg, our keeper who is working with Tattoo right now, has a target pole, so it has that little buoy on the end of it. Um, Tattoo knows if he touches his nose to that, he'll get a reward. Um, not lick it, that's cheating. <laughs> so that's what he's trying to do there. Um, so she's just kind of moving him around. So we can use this target for a lot of different things. Um, we can use it as to shape different behaviors. So that means we kind of take this and then build on it. Okay. Um, so for instance, we can use this target and get him into a position where we'd actually be able to do a blood draw from him, or we'll be able to work on his hooves if he's comfortable moving to where we need him to. Um, with, for giraffe, is extremely, extremely yep. important. We can't hold a giraffe in place to do what we want. It's completely <laughs> up to them. Um, so for, the, for him to be really involved with us and doing all of his behaviors voluntarily, that's exactly what we want to see. So right now she's just doing that target. You can hear the clicker, that's what we call a bridge. Yep. Um, and that is how he knows he did what he wants. And then he's getting a treat out of her little bucket there. Um, right now we're using cinnamon leaf eater biscuits. So it's designed for something really yummy for him. Um, and he really, really likes those. How long does it take to get to this point? I mean, he obviously is very well yes, trained, yes. but I assume this didn't happen overnight. It How long does not. this process um, take? It's very animal dependent, okay. so it really, really depends on how well we're building this behavior. So if we're super consistent with it, he's, you know, building up to it. It could take, it, I really don't know a time period for tattoo, just building his confidence was mm -hmm. honestly the harder thing. He's more of a giraffe um, than our previous giraffe because he's very <laughs> skeptical. Um, he's afraid of his own shadow sometimes. So he really <laughs> had to build up his confidence. So he just knew that this was all a positive, positive experience. So to get him this comfortable and doing it outside, which was also different for him, I would say it took about a couple months. You talked about some of the characteristic traits of giraffes yes. being a little a little skittish. Tell us about a giraffe out in the wild and, and how you're able to try and simulate that experience here at the Lehigh Valley. Sure. Zoo. Yeah, so giraffes in the wild just have to be constantly alert. Giraffes yeah. in general and tattoo included only um, sleep for about an hour to two hours a day because they really need to be up and alert and looking for predators. Mm -hmm. Now you can tell that their height is obviously going to be something that's going to be their greatest adaptation out in the wild because they can see wide across the savanna and see when predators are there. Um, so that is one of the biggest adaptations they have is that height. Um, they also can be extremely fast when they need to be and getting away from predators and things like that. A giraffe can run about 35 miles per hour when it needs to. Um, tattoo, like a regular giraffe, does get a little skittish sometimes. If he hears a lot of people down at the ford, which is just kind of like down the hill past our exhibit, he'll actually use this full length of the exhibit to run and kind of show that off. Besides that, we just, you know, to make this more simulated like a natural environment, all of our enrichment points are up really nice and high, so you can see they're up. Um, so he has to use that neck and actually really stretch for stuff. Um, all of his, his tree branches and things like that, and our deck, which is where we do our public feedings, also has a couple points where we can do that stuff. Um, so we want to make sure he's using that neck, using all those muscles. We make it a little challenging for yeah. him because there's not just someone handing food out on the savanna. Yeah. Um, so we try to do that to make it just so he's more engaged, has stuff to do, um, and it's a little bit more natural for him. You mentioned the importance of having this training so you can do medical checks, yes. blood draws. Mm -hmm. How often do you have to do that with Tattoo to make sure that you're able to keep him safe and keep him healthy? Absolutely, yeah. So we try to do these sessions very, very often, um, usually once a day, if possible twice a day. Um, Meg is one of our two trainers. Our primary trainer, Kayla, has been working with him since he came here, and we introduced Meg more recently, so, so he had more days for training. Um, when you're doing re routine medical stuff, like a blood draw, things like that, we want to do it fairly frequently, but it also is animal dependent. If tattoo is all healthy, um, we're doing regular sampling from him, from um, his stool and things like that, so we're seeing that he's nice and healthy. We'll yep. do that less often, um, but for you know, for instance, we had our other draft, Murphy, we were doing almost weekly blood draws okay. on him because we were taking such um, extra steps to make sure that we were keeping, doing our part to keep him as yeah. healthy as possible. Um, and then for foot care, as you can possibly imagine, an animal that doesn't sleep that often right. and is standing, tattoo weighs about 2,000 pounds. So that's a lot of weight on those feet. Um, so we want to make sure we're keeping those feet healthy. And once he's at that time, this is a totally scary new thing for him still. <laughs> um, but once we're at that point, we'll hopefully also be able to do that 
probably about three times a week would be a good good indicator for foot health. You mentioned the deck feeding. Yes. Do you think we can get up Absolutely, there? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Tattoo would love that. All right, let's do it. <laughs> All right, so here we go. It's like <laughs> lunchtime for tattoo. Um, the, the tongue. Give us give us some information on the tongue. How, how long are we talking here? Yeah, so giraffe tongues on average are about 18 inches long, um, which gives them the ability to use that already extremely long neck and then add even some more height to it to be able to get leaves. Um, if you look at our exhibit here, you can see exactly how high the giraffe can reach with their tongue because those branches are stripped clean of leaves. Um, also the color, if you notice that his tongue, I can try to get it out there, it's almost purpley black. It's actually believed that that coloration is to help them from getting sunburnt on their tongue because they eat for about 20 hours a day. Interesting, okay. Yeah. And then also a really cool trait that they have on their tongues because their natural food source out in the wild is actually acacia, which is a tree that has a lot of different kind of barbs on it, like we're used to with some of the native invasive plants here, um, including autumn olive, which is an invasive species of plant that we feed them. Their tongue actually has a, um, in the saliva, it actually has an antibacterial part to it, which actually helps them from getting kind of infections on their tongue as they're eating okay. their natural food. How much romaine are we gonna go through in a given day with tattoo? Tattoo during <laughs> his public feed, and also just the stuff that is counted into his daily diet is almost five kilograms of lettuce, which to give you a better idea is almost 10 pounds. Um, and that is just to fill this 2,000 pound body. Wow. <laughs> You mentioned earlier about how these guys out in the wild sleep only about an hour or two on a, on a daily basis, looking out for predators, looking out for prey. Mm -hmm. uh, in the wild, just how endangered are these guys? What can we do you know, here in the Lehigh Valley, here in this country, to make sure that these guys stick around for a long time? Yeah, Maasai giraffe in particular, which is the subspecies that Tattoo has, are um, considered endangered out in the wild. Giraffe numbers are one um, species that their numbers are not as reported as wildly, but their numbers are dwindling out in the wild. Um, the biggest thing that we can do is support organizations that are directly related to giraffe conservation. The one that the zoo has partnered with is called the Giraffe Conservation Fund. And what they do is a lot of tracking of giraffes. They'll actually put GPS collars up on that ossicone so they can see the distance the giraffe are having to travel um, to get to food sources, to avoid predators, to avoid poachers, which is a huge issue for them. Um, so we actually, with every single feed ticket that you buy here at the zoo, you're actually contributing towards our donation yearly that we give to that organization. Um, otherwise, just learning about giraffe and the plights that they're under, I think education for our guests is the most important thing we can provide um, to kind of just explain what is going on with these giraffes in the wild. And we have a really great ambassador here at the zoo. <laughs> Liz, this has been hugely educational and enjoyable. Thank you so much for Absolutely. sharing Tattoo's story and, and filling us in a little bit. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem.